Hey everybody, it's Jameson. So I started a little something with my uh, thrift shop video uh, that I did a couple of uh, weeks ago now. If you want to look for that, uh, I'll drop the link here at the top of the screen and you can go check that one out. Uh, in that video, I talked about buying um, ceramic pieces at the thrift store that uh, you could use to spray with zip. Uh, and this is what I mean by zip, boron nitride spray. Spray it with zip, fill it with uh, scrap or frit, and do a melt in your kiln. And so uh, I did not buy the piece, actually, that I had found in the video. Uh, a viewer, Jan Frost, did, and Jan posted online that she found not only that one, but a few others. And, and Jan, I don't think you found this one, but I think you found one real close. I ended up at a different uh, thrift store and found this for $1.99. And I thought it could be cool um, for flags that are three stripes that could look kind of neat. So like a, like a Germany flag where it's black and red and yellow. Uh, or just, you know, it's kind of a wave design or uh, maybe uh, do some pieces that hang as a little uh, sun catcher uh, or not sun catcher, but uh, wind chime. So anyway, uh, that's this piece in particular. And then I was at a store called Daiso, which um, Kathy Bidler turned me on to Daiso. It, you may not have it where you are. It's basically, and I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it right, but it's basically a Japanese um, kind of dollar store. If you're, if you're familiar with the store in the United States, Five Below, it's kind of like a Japanese version of Five Below. And so I was there and they had a number of pieces that I thought uh, could make nice round casting molds. Uh, so I bought a couple of bowls and um, I don't know if this could end up being a nice little pendant shape or if I wanted to make uh, some some elements that then got fused into a bigger piece. I kind of like this little teardrop. So anyway, I'm going to spray these with zip. Now, I don't have a sandblaster, so I think you could take these into your sandblaster, rough them up and give them some texture so that the zip would stick a little bit better or frankly, maybe you try kiln wash. If you've got experience with any of this, drop, drop a comment. I don't have a sandblaster, so all I'm gonna do is just spray these with zip. If I really was passionate about it, I could try to rough them up with a, a Dremel, maybe a little bit. You'd have to be very careful not to scar too deep. Um, maybe even diamond pad. Uh, I don't know, I'm not doing any of that. I just, I don't have the time for that. <laughs> so I'm gonna spray these with zip and then I will fill them with uh, various bits of glass and let's see what we make. Okay, I got them sprayed down with zip. You can't really see that because they were white to begin with. Uh, I may have used too much. I may have used not enough. I'm not really sure. The good thing about all of these pieces is that they were cheap. Um, they were all uh, $1.50 uh, from Daiso and then this uh, this one was uh, only a dollar. It said the tag was $1.99 but it was half price. So. Um, if glass sticks in there, then all I've lost, I guess, is the piece and, and maybe some of the glass, but I think I've got enough zip in there. So I'm going to fill these up. And one of the thoughts is, or, you know, is you've got to think about this, um, this zip is kind of barely on there. So you want to make sure that you're laying your frit in fairly gingerly because you don't want to scratch off or bring up that, that zip because it's just going to end up in your piece and that's no good. So you got to be careful when you fill these. Uh, and the other thing that you might be wondering, I didn't address this in the first segment, questions about how, how do you know that you can fire in, in ceramics like this? Well, I guess I don't know for sure, but you've got to think that most ceramics are fired a heck of a lot harder, hotter than our kilns go. And these glazes are on here a lot hotter, um, you know, 2000 degrees or more. And so I don't think it's a problem. I suppose if it is a problem, then uh, we'll learn through the experience together, but I don't think I'm gonna have an issue with these uh, or, or most ceramics. You just, you gotta know what you've got. I, I'd be careful, um, you know, to make sure that there's not moisture in it uh, or, you know, I wouldn't necessarily use something, um, you know, that's that's uh, collectible or too fancy. This is just stuff off the, basically off a dollar store shelf. So anyway, I'm gonna fill these up with for it and or maybe some other scrap glass and fire these things. All right, let's see how these turned out. I did these in the kiln at 1520 degrees for 30 minutes. So um, really treated them like a scrap melt because that's what they were. They were uh, glass scraps. I wanted to get a really great bubble squeeze, so I did a very slow squeeze. I'll always 
post my schedules for you in my video description. So look for that. Uh, and then you can see exactly what that looked like. So let's try to pop them out. This one I know is gonna come right out because it was already jiggly as I was walking from the kiln. So here you go. Let's uh, clean this up real quick, sorry. So this one was peacock glass only. I didn't add any clear to these. Just uh, nice, I get a nice little, almost, uh, almost like a rondelle of peacock glass. There's a little bit of texture on the back uh, from the zip mostly because this is a very smooth bowl. Um, so there's the thickness. Let me check this. Hang on. I have these cheap digital calipers that I bought at Amazon and they have been awesome. Right about 10, a little more than 10 millimeters. So, um, you know, the six millimeter rule, if I put this in the kiln and refired it, it might spread out a little further. Um, I might do that. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. This was just an experiment and I wanted to use up some scrap, but I'm, you probably can't see it very well, but I'm very pleased with, um, with the way this turned out and very few bubbles. So that's that one. Let's hope this one pops out in the same manner. Yep. So probably this one seems like thinner. Yeah. Eight and a half. So, um, here's a thought too, just, <clears throat> I'll weigh these and just take good notes, folks, of all of your firings, not just of the schedule, but maybe what kind of glass you use, especially if you have a studio where you have both, um, 96 glass and, and COE 90 glass. Um, in this case, I'll take a note as to how much glass I used by, I didn't weigh this beforehand, but I can take this puck now and put it on the scale and weigh it. And I, I'm making this up, but if it's 90 grams, then I know that 90 grams in that bowl gave me a thickness of about eight and a half. Next time I can dial it back. If I want something super thick, I can turn that up a little bit. Uh, same here. So just, I'll go weigh these later, but take notes for yourself and do yourself a favor because if you're like me, the memory will not hold up. All right. Oh, so here's where um, looks like some of that zip flaked right off, which is not a surprise because this is super slick glazed ceramic. Uh, I did not rough this up at all. I didn't put it in a sandblaster. So um, that does not surprise me that that could happen. Um, that's what you get with glazed ceramics. You, These others I could probably refire in relatively easily. That one popped off, so I'll have to re-zip that. And I'm at about 7.7 .7 millimeters on that one. Uh, this little guy's kind of cute, this little teardrop. I threw some scrap zip in there. Or not zip, but <laughs> dichro. It's kind of fun. Some dimension to it. You can see that white. Uh, same thing, it looks like I had some zip that flaked off. Let's see if I can clean that off quickly. I, uh, I left the center of this kind of clear. So, that's fun. Can you see that? Looks like I had a little bit of a dichro layer that floated up, but you know, I could use that as an inclusion in another piece, and or I could drill a hole in that and perhaps sell it as a pendant. We shall see, because that's actually a really nice um, size. It's uh, probably about eight, yeah, 8.7 millimeter thickness, but it doesn't seem too thick. It certainly is not very heavy. Yeah, I could maybe drill a, a hole in that and that would be a nice little pendant. So maybe I got myself a, a pendant mold there. All right, I'm really interested to see these guys. I'm sure they'll pop out fine. What, I, what I'm trying to do is also get these out without scratching up the zip, because if I don't have to reapply to do another round, I would prefer not to. All right, all three came out nice and clean. So these are fun. I'm gonna just try to, I don't know what I'm gonna do with them. Again, this was mostly an experiment just to kind of see what would happen and what the firing schedule would look like. Same thing, if I wanna weigh these, this one's got a little bit of a spike on it, so I'm trying to be careful. Uh, wanna weigh these and then, you know, kind of get a sense of how full the mold is and what I get as a result. I kinda of really dig these that are blue. I added some turquoise, remember? But um, those are kind of fun. Remember I said maybe it could be used as a, almost as a flag, I'm not sure. I guess it would help if I turn these the right directions. Yeah, I mean, 
if I fired these as, you know, black and red and yellow like a German flag, that could be cool. Frankly, it looks like toothpaste. <laughs> looks like a toothpaste commercial for uh, Aquafresh or something. Okay, well, there you go. You can successfully fire in glazed ceramic. Just make sure that you prime it well. In this case, I use Zip because uh, it's easy and it gives you a nice release and uh, just be creative be a fearless fuser play with it have some fun uh, drop me a comment let me know what you think let me know if you've experimented uh, and hope everybody's having a great one follow the channel subscribe like turn on your alerts so that you're notified when i post future videos and i will see you soon in another video bye okay one piece of bonus footage for you as i was cleaning this one up after i filmed Talked about the little spike there uh, that could be easily just knocked off with a little bit of a grinder or even a small diamond pad. What I wanted to point out is there is some zip residue. I'm sure you can see that in the reflection there that happened along the edges in a couple of spots. I'm wondering if that's because a piece of glass was up against the side and then fused in and maybe had pulled in some of that zip at that point. So you see a little bit on both sides of this. If I were to use this in a future project, or I should say when I use this in a future project, because I'm sure I'll find a use for it. Um, I would take my diamond pad. If you've got a sandblaster, that would work really quickly, but I don't. So I'll use a diamond pad and just sand this down, get rid of all of that, because I would use this in a full fuse project most likely anyway. Uh, and then um, uh, in doing that, it would take care of, I believe, all of this. Even if I didn't want to full fuse it, maybe I wanted to use it as it is for something. I don't know, garden steak? I don't even know. Uh, but. I could just do a fire polish after I do a diamond pad on it, but that, this is so thin, that would take care of that really easily. So just a quick tip for you, if you're firing and some of your pieces come out with that, um, even these pieces, you know, this one, as I cleaned it up, there's just a little bit on the edge that on the back would probably be good to sand off or sandblast and then do a fire polish on. So just a quick little bonus tip for you. Thanks. Okay, so I went ahead and sanded them down and fire polished them. And uh, I didn't do as good a job as I could have. There's still a little bit of zip spots here. Where I did a nice job sanding, it came off and it was great. There were just a couple spots that I missed when I was sanding. But I uh, did the same on these little pucks and they turned out quite nice, nice and clear. Uh, sanded the back of them, same on this one. So there you go. Uh, for me, the fire polish that I took it up to, was 1425 and it held for an hour because I had something else that was going in like that, uh, but got nice, nice results with those. So there you are. Thanks.